So before we start, I just want to point out that I'm using the macOS version of Logisim. But since it's a Java application, it runs exactly the same on different operating systems, so that doesn't matter. And you'll find the interface and the functionality is just the same in the Windows version. So this is application window of, multi of uh, Logisim. So you can see on the right here, we've got this dotted area, which is our workspace where we can build our circuits. And on the left, we've got a kind of navigation area with different folders where you can find different um, digital electronic devices we can use to build our circuits. And in the bottom, there's a properties window. So when you create a Logisim project, it's just called Untitled by default. So I'm just going to save this. I'm just going to save it on the desktop, this tutorial. So that will save as a Logisim project file, so .circ file. So our project is now called the tutorial, and it only contains one circuit, the default one, which is called main. So it's going to go in here, and you can see there's various properties you can change, maybe the name of the circuit and so on. So for the beginning, we're just going to look at to add in a simple logic gate. So I was going to extend the gates folder here, and you can see there's different logic gates. I'm going to select an AND gate. So I put that, if you move your mouse into the workspace, you can see it puts a symbol there, and you can move it around and place it as you wish. But before I do that, I'm just going to change one of the properties. You can actually change the size. So I prefer the narrow one, just because it makes it a bit easier to draw bigger circuits later on when we're doing more complex things. If you know as well, you can also change the number of inputs. So about two is the default, but you can put up to three input if you need four and so on. I'm just going to leave it as two. I'm going to place that in now. And the next thing we need to do is add in some inputs. So we can see on the left here we've got the two blue circles are for the inputs, and the one on the right is the output. So we go on wiring, we'll see pin. So I'm going to select the pin. So we want to we want to make some inputs. So it asks you, asks you the question here in the properties output no. So that obviously means if it's not an output, it must be an input. So I'm just going to stick a couple of those in. I'm just going to place them there random at the moment. So just so we don't get confused, I'm going to get, click on the the first one I put down, I'm going to give it a label. Let's call it A. So you can change the position of the, if you select that, you can change the location of the label. I'll just keep it on the west. And I'll put this one in. Let's call this one B. So you can put, um, you can kind of put them anywhere where you want in your circuit, but it's obviously good to just put them near to the gate that you're working on. And you'll probably notice when I'm doing these videos, I've got quite. Uh, bad OCD when it comes to the net circuits. I get very stressed if it's not all neat and symmetrical. But it is good practice to draw your circuits in a kind of a neat and tidy manner. It makes it easy to find problems with things. So I was going to hover my mouse over the input and you can see that it kind of gets a focus on it and I can just draw a path and I'm going to connect that to A. So now that path has gone green, that shows me that's connected properly. I'm going to do the same for B. And then on the 8 put, we can add on a probe, so I just extended the wire from the 8 put, and I'm going to put a probe on. So again, I'm just going to face that to the east, I'm going to, oh, actually that needs to be facing to the west. So I'll put that down, you can see this the input is on the, input to the probe is on the right hand side. So once I've selected that, I'll face it to the west, and I'll drag that in. So that's connected up. So this now, is actually running this simulation. If we go on simulate, you can see it's enabled here. So then we need to use, use the poke tool to change could to change the inputs. You can see at the moment both inputs are zero, so we've got zero, zero. We know from the truth table for an AND gate, zero and zero gives us a zero on the eight put. So I select B with the poke tool, that'll change it to a one. And you can see then. The wire from B has gone to a lighter colour green, so that tells us that it's a, a one. You know, not the darker, darker greens mean it's a zero. So, we're, and again from the tree table, we know zero 
and one still gives us a zero. So then we'll try one zero combination again, we've still got a zero. And then we know from the truth table, I'm going to turn both on. So both inputs are a one and our output is a one also. So there's one extra thing you can do just to make it a bit easier to follow your simulations. You can put labels in. So I was going to stick a label at the top and just say hang it. And you can use the arrow tool just to move things around. So it's later on, just in case I forget the symbol, I can remember that this is an AND gate. So there we go, we can see it's very easy to simulate things on Logisim. You build a circuit, you just draw the wires to connect things up, and then we can use a poke tool just to change the values of the inputs. And we can see the state of the output using a probe.